are these people? What What would you tell people? Because a lot of people I'm sure you talk to will immediately reply back to you. Well, you live under a dictatorship. So <laughs> is there any validity to any of that no. claims of torturing prisoners and chemical weapon attacks? I already know most of your answer, but feel free to tell our audience who might not know, you know? I guess my answer would be, dude, look in the mirror. <laughs> I think <mean, laughs> if anyone's living in a in a totalitarian environment right now, it's the US and the UK and the EU. I mean, come on, seriously? You know, <laughs> I, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like saying Iran doesn't have women's rights. I mean, like, you know, that's the most, it's, it's just insane. Um, have you seen President Assad walking out in the middle of some of the most crowded areas of Damascus with absolutely no security? Can oh. any of your presidents or any <laughs> of the European leaders or any of the UK leaders do that without getting eggs in their face? I mean, come I, on. I wish like, that seriously. happened more often. Would be nice. <laughs> um. Well, I think Macron gets it every time he he, he goes <laughs> out. Um, look, <laughs> people. When people talk about a dictatorship, um, you assume that nobody will talk about politics. Nobody will criticize the government. Come to Syria. Get in the taxi. The first taxi you get into, if they speak a little bit of English, the first yeah. thing they will start telling you is the government this, the government did that, the government cut the electricity, the blah, blah, blah. And they will moan for the whole journey. <laughs> a lot of it is justified, by the way. Um, if you go into any bar, into any restaurant, people are talking politics everywhere, yes. literally everywhere. Yes. You know? um, what I will say is generally for people, they're happy to criticize the government, but kind of the president is the red line. And not mm -hmm. because um, out of fear of, of retribution, but because the respect for their president, who basically never left the country throughout the 13 years regime change war, even when ISIS were 20 kilometers away from, or even less actually, from um, where he lives in Damascus, which by the way is not some kind of ornate palace. It's, it's a relatively simple residential apartment. And he's famous actually for getting in his car late at night when he can't sleep on his own without any security detail and just driving around Damascus. And he loves apparently surprising the checkpoints because when they see the car, they, they obviously stop it. We still have some security checkpoints. Most of them have now been dismantled in Damascus. And then they realize that it's the president on his own in his own car sort of driving around Damascus. <laughs> you know, these, these aren't just kind of little anecdotes. These happen on a regular basis. Um, yeah, of course, you know, there, there are issues in Syria most of which have been generated um, by the war and by the economic sanctions and, and the blockade and the siege and the theft of resources and so on. And yes, the government is struggling to, um, you know, to maintain services. But at the same time, and, the, and this is something, you know, particularly in the US where I know everyone struggles with health care and health insurance and so on, but I will give you an anecdote. Um, I had kidney problems fairly recently. And um, I was like, okay, what do I do? Because I'm in UK mode where, you know, you have to wait three weeks to get an appointment and so on. So I spoke to my friend and he said, no, don't worry. I'll call the kidney specialist at one of the hospitals. So he called the <laughs> kidney specialist, like one of the top kidney surgeons um, in Syria. He called him at 10 in the morning. At 2 in the afternoon, I saw him for a mm. consultation. Within 24 hours, I had the treatment that I needed to kind of, you know, bash the stone to pieces. And he refused to take any money for it because I'm a guest in his country. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, this... <laughs> another thing that I, I guess, you know, as part of the other question you asked is that 
what I love about living here is that they still have those traditional values, the, the values of hospitality and mm -hmm. generosity and um, trust and community. Like families are still really important. You know, elderly parents don't get put in nursing homes. <laughs> Um, they're kept in the family and taken care of by the family and the grandkids and so on. Um, and that sense of community, which certainly in the UK, in my opinion, has been um, destroyed, deliberately destroyed by successive governments and, and you know, corporate oligarchs and so on through various projects, including, of course, the COVID project most recently. Um, whereas here that very traditional lifestyle still exists and yes you know it, it's based in a religion but it's not an institutional religion it's a faith that these people grow up in that that governs their behavior and governs their reactions to their neighbors to their friends to their family to their guests um it's it's part of the dna it's it's not an institutionalized control mechanism it's something that is deeply embedded um, within them it's a spirituality um, regardless of what label you put on that <clears throat> on that element within them um, and again that's something that has been systematically eroded and destroyed in the west in my opinion yeah it, i've said this um i'm not sure if i said this on stream before but i've visited jordan over a decade mm. ago. And I can vouch for you in terms of if you go to the Middle East, I think especially with people knowing that you're coming a long way, uh, the hospitality that I experienced in Jordan and Morocco were probably some of the most, uh, I think, surprising to me because that's not necessarily talking about, but it was probably the top as far as the most welcoming that I've ever received in any country that mm -hmm. I visited and, um, and yeah, I'm glad that you kind of said that, um, just given you being in Syria, it kind of vouches that region that they really respect the idea of visitors coming in because <laughs> they understand it takes a lot, um, you know, to come in and especially in those countries. So the idea that you're coming for them, they really mm -hmm. take honor in that and they will do anything for you um to essentially welcome you uh in their communities in that way so i'm really happy that you kind of mentioned that just kind of going off of my experience 